Hello. Welcome to another Siler Instrument Quick Tip. I'm Holly Urbain from Siler Instrument, Wisconsin. This session is going to focus on alignments in Trimble Access General Survey. Recently, a new version was released in the traditional older data collector software. We had roads, alignments, and lines. In the newer versions, they've added some more features. Lines, polylines, alignments, a reference alignment, roads, and strings. One of the most important things that you need to know is the layer manager and whether the features and the lines that you are using are visible or are they selectable. We're focusing on version 2021-21, which recently came out from Trimble Access. Here's a quick example of what the roading looks like now. With the alignment selectable, you tap on it, you hit stakeout. It, this happens to be a GPS survey, but it asked me for my antenna height and it asked me for a station interval. If I was using a total station, it would just ask me for my target height and again a station interval. I hit start and it says to the alignment. To the alignment is the same as position on road in the previous versions, but right away we're seeing our current station and offset. Graphically on the left side we're seeing the yellow circles where we currently are and the dashed line is connecting back to the alignment. If we hit escape we can change to a different method called station on alignment. Think of that as station and offset. You're able to tap station, and because you set the station to interval to 50 feet, you're seeing the alignment with all the elements every 50 feet, including PCs, PTs, PIs, vertical, horizontal elements. At any time, you can just go down here to the bottom and type in any station. You don't need the plus sign, and then hit start. A little blue dot is going to show up on the alignment for the station that you typed in. The word offset showed up at the bottom of the screen, but here's where we can just hit start. So a little bullseye shows up on top of that blue dot. So now it is taking us to station 17 plus 55. And like previous versions, you have a station plus and station minus hotkeys available at the bottom of the page. After you've entered a station, the offset button is going to show up at the bottom of the screen. If you tap that, if we had a road, you would see more strings like edges of pavements, shoulders. But if we just type in an offset, a blue dot shows up and we can use the station plus and minus to move that up and down. The, the station plus and minus will now stay out at that offset. One of the things I notice is if you accidentally tap off an element, um, it goes from station on alignment to to the alignment. All you have to do is just tap on one of the circles, one of the dots, and it'll go back into to the alignment. As I said, we're going to focus on general survey. And here's a line. So a line is just a straight segment between two points. If you click at the right edge of any line, it's going to stake it from right to left. If you click at the left edge, it's going to go from left to right. At the bottom of the page, you can review that alignment, and it shows you the bearing and distance, but way down at the bottom, you can see it has a starting station and a station interval. If you enter a station interval, just like we did with the roading, it's going to put stationing on that line. It does not turn it into a, an alignment or a polyline. It's still just a line, but we could stake it like we would a normal line. The six methods, we have to the line, on the line, station offset from the line. Again, whichever stake method you choose, make sure you check the scroll bar on the far right, because when you change the method, more elements might appear off the screen. You don't have to actually tap the scroll bar. You can just slide the whole right dialog box up and down. Then again, as you hit the plus and minus, you'll see that bullseye. And now we have a better graphic interface. So again, the yellow circle is us. The dashed line shows where we are relative to the alignment. And the green line tells us where we have to go. We're still seeing the traditional stakeout over on the right side. So if we hit escape again, we're back out in regular general survey. If you tap that line again, review it, go down to the bottom and take that station interval out, it goes back to being just a regular line on the screen. Now we're going to focus on staking a polyline. A polyline is just a string of lines, arcs, and points. So this particular polyline came from a DXF file. So by hitting the layer manager, what I call the stack of papers, it brings up the layer manager. And I said it's important that you know a checkbox means something is visible. A checkbox with a box around it means it's selectable. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the alignments just to clean up the screen. And we have the asphalt edge as active. 
So now I can tap on it, and so it's going to stake it in a counterclockwise manner from wherever I tapped. There's an arrow right there. It's not all that visual. But if I click and hold on the map screen, I can reverse direction. Now it's staking it in a clockwise motion. Just like with the stakeout line, when I go to stakeout, I have multiple methods. There's actually seven of them for a polyline. To the polyline, from the polyline, and again, just like the line, we can put stationing on this polyline. So if I scroll down a little bit, you can see I have a station and a station interval. So if I pick a number, I put in 4 plus 0, 0, I apply a station interval. You can see it displays stationing now for this polyline on the screen. If I want, I can do horizontal offsets, vertical offsets. I can use the station plus and minus, and you can see that little black and white bullseye moving around. That's my target location. Again, I really like the new improved graphics. If we zoom in, the yellow uh, dot is us. The dotted line shows us tied to the polyline, and the green line shows us the direction we have to go to stake that point. We still have the arrow in the upper right, which is the traditional interface, but if you click and hold on that bottom half, there's 24 items that you can change, customize the display however you want it to be. So now let's focus on st staking an RXL or an XML. Again, we're in general survey, and what we're going to do is we're going to select the polyline under the layer manager. When you tap on what I call the stack of papers, it brings up the layer manager. It shows all of the available files in your current project folder. DXF, XML, RXLs, all the kind of graphic type things that you have in your current project folder. If you put it in a different folder, there's actually a browse button at the bottom of the page. So if I put it right in my C drive of my TSE 7 I can browse to that location and attach it. Again, a single click means it's visible. Click on it a second time, it makes it selectable. That means you can actually use it. A few versions ago, they've combined the, what was it, linked files with the active map. So when you created a job in the past, it used to have linked files and active map. Well, now on the job properties, there's a, a button for the layer manager. So they've combined all of the kind of graphic stuff into one location. So when you're creating a job and you hit the layer manager, it brings you to the same layer manager that you see from the map screen. So from the map screen, if I tap that layer manager, you can see right now it's taking up about a third of the screen. I got point files, map files, scans, and there's a little arrow that says I have more tabs to choose from. There's six of them. With the larger screen collectors like the TSC7 or a tablet, you can grab that three vertical bars and slide it so you can see all six tabs at the same time. So if we do look under the point files tab, that's where you would have a CSV, a TXT, another job file. Those are point type files. But under the map files layer, that's where you would turn CAD drawings. If you have the little uh, white triangles on the left side, it means that there's more layers inside that CAD file. You don't have to turn on the whole CAD file. As you click on elements, a checkbox again means let it be seen. A second checkbox uh, with the box around it means let it be selectable. So you can stake it and use it. If you want to turn something off, just uncheck it completely. So in general survey, you have the select icon active. You tap on an active RXL, something that has a checkbox with a box around it, and you're going to hit stakeout. At the uh, start of any stakeout, it asks you for the antenna height, where you're measuring to, and what's the station interval. Before you start, you should always check the options button. There's about three pages of options that you need to check. The first two are similar to what we've had in the past. How you view a point, how you store an as stake point, whether it's target centered, surveyor centered. There's a new checkbox there called show stakeout graphics. We're going to come back to that one. But on this second page, there's a lot of really important information. You have road, how to display the cut fill, vertical or perpendicular. The DTM, vertical or perpendicular. And you also have that same setting when you're doing construction offsets. I just want to explain that a little bit because it does make a difference. If someone else has been using your collector, you want to make sure that it's set back to the way you want it. If we have a surface like this blue tin and we have the earth and our, that red dot is what we're trying to stake, 
if we have it set to vertical, it's going to give us a vertical offset down to the DTM. If we change any of those offsets, offsets to be perpendicular, it's actually going to give us the perpendicular to the surface, to the road, or to the DTM. So it's a big difference. And an example I'll use is if somebody's doing some rock blasting and they only want to blast two feet of granite. If you're using a perpendicular offset, you're only going to get two feet deep. If you set it to vertical on a very steep slope, you might get two and a half feet deep to that surface. So just be careful whether you're set to perpendicular or vertical and know that it is set. You have it set for roads, you have it set for DTMs, and you have it set for construction offsets. From starting an alignment, here's where I wanted to take you. You have five checkboxes here to what stations are included in your station list. So remember when I was scrolling up and down through the stations? If we unchecked all these boxes, we would only have a road start and a road end. By having that top left check box, it's showing us every 50 feet. So I have 1, 150, 2, 250. By checking the vertical and horizontal elements, that's where it starts to include things like PCs, PTs. We've got a vertical curve start, vertical curve end, high points, low points. Same thing with the horizontal information. But you have to hit this options button from the start station. If we've already started an alignment staking and we hit it, these options won't be there. So you do have to hit it right as you're starting to stake an alignment, not after you've actually started staking it, if that makes sense. So from the uh, map screen, we selected the alignment, we hit next, and then we're going to pick the method. There are little nodes that showed up every 50 feet along that alignment because that's what we set our station interval to. Our four methods are to the alignment, on the alignment, skewed, or a side slope from the alignment. So if we pick the traditional station or to the alignment, that's more like I said, it was position on road in the old data collector. It's showing on the left side where we are and the dash line is connecting. On the right side, we have the same feedback we had in the old collector and we have a station offset at the bottom. But since we have that new graphic view on the left, it seems kind of redundant to me to have that uh, graphic in both places. So if you hit the options key and you uncheck the box that says show stakeout, it'll turn off so we don't see that target in both locations and give us a lot more space and control over what we see on the right side of the screen. So if I click and hold down on that screen, you can see I have 24 things that I can add for my feedback while I'm staking. If you actually edit it from the options key, it's going to allow us to save it to a survey style so you don't have to edit it every time you go in there. If you edit it by a touch and hold on the screen, it doesn't give us that option to save it. But if you do the edit from the options key, there's a, a button that highlights and comes and says save to survey style. So that way you could have different survey styles with different display interfaces set the way that you want them to be set. Once we hit start, if we have station on alignment, we've got two different methods for staking. The new one is the graphical interface. You just tap on the station on the map. And as I said, we set the station interval to 50 feet, but you can see that stationing is not displaying every 50 feet. The data collector is smart enough not to throw too many numbers on top of each other. So as you start zooming in, it starts displaying more and more station values. As you get closer, you can see there's a little uh, clear circle at each node that is a PC, a PT, a vertical. And so as soon as you zoom in close enough, every one of those nodes will be labeled. And then all you do, is tap on it, hit start, and you're good to go. If you prefer a more traditional method, down at the bottom of the screen there's a hotkey for station. You'll see that list, it's populated by the station interval that you set, and you can just click on one of those stations, you can just start typing 10 plus 00, zero or you can drop the cursor into this station field and enter something that's not part of your station list. A little blue dot is going to show up on the screen. Right now we're staking station 30 plus 00, zero offset 0. So it's showing us a little blue dot. Once you pick a station, the offset key highlights. So again, if you want to enter an offset, you just tap the offset key. If you are just doing center line, you can use that station plus and station minus hotkeys to move up and down. You hit start. Again, we have that graphical interface turned back on again, but we get a bullseye on the screen. That's where we're trying to get to. 
on the map, I can click and hold. If I want to, I can define some construction offsets while we're still in general survey. So let's say I'm staking a water main and we know they're going to excavate at the end of that pipe. Pick the station, pick the offset to calculate the location, but then do a construction offset. And a construction offset shows up as a little green dot. So the blue location is station 1750, offset 12 feet, but then we have a horizontal offset of 3 feet. Again, I will warn you on that side, if you have a vertical offset applied, there is a tiny little scroll bar over there, so make sure you try and scroll. As soon as you hit start, that black and white bullseye shows up on top of our construction offset point. If we want, we can measure and store. One of the coolest things that I think they've added is the ability to select a reference alignment. So how many times have you been staking a side road and you want the stationing from both the main line and the side road to be available? So in order to reference two alignments at the same time, I'm going to pick the center line alignment, set my station interval, my antenna height, and I'm going to hit next. I set to the alignment, then I'm going to click and hold in the map screen and I'm going to select a reference alignment. Right now that can't be done graphically, you have to use the pull downs but I'm going to set an RXL from my current project folder. I hit accept and I hit start. Because I have to the alignment, again that's the same as position on road, it's actually showing me my station and offset to my main line and it's showing me the station and offset to my side road. And I know somebody's going to ask, if we have this uh, stored, if we store a point here, can we report on both alignments? And the answer is yes. If I set it to station on alignment, again, I pick the main line alignment first, so it's showing me my main line alignment stationing. I can type in a station, I can type in an offset, I hit start, and it's directing me to that blue dot. It's going to show me the directions to get to the blue dot, and as we're moving, it's also showing us the stationing and offset from the side road alignment. If we were to actually measure and store a point as part of the job metadata, you can see the confirmed as stake deltas. It has the station and the offset from the main line and it has the station and offset from the side road. So we've covered how to stake lines, polylines, alignments, and reference alignments within general survey. The next video is going to handle strings and roads. I'd like to thank you for watching this Siler Instrument quick tip.